you said, uh, my name is Sean Ivory. My mentor is Dr. Running. He actually couldn't be here today. He is in Beijing actually presenting his own research project for the summer. So what I was working on was standard all seat solo en ensemble repertoire for the saxophone and sort of a quantitative analysis. I, originally I wanted to look at like this, this all state repertoire and figure out why certain pieces or do like a more qualitative analysis of like why certain pieces are more popular than others. But I realized real fast that I don't have enough music theory knowledge to actually do that. I think I spent like an entire day looking at this one piece and I still wasn't done and I had like a stack of 70 more to go. So it just wasn't going to happen. So um, I started out, I found all 50 states, all state list. Um, kind of a gigantic problem with this. There's no standard format, so it, it like took forever to find these things. So originally I found like just a basic yes or no answer. Do states actually have these contests? Is it for solo? Is it for ensemble? Is it both? And then eventually I got to actually compiling the pieces that are required for a saxophone audition. Um, um, out of the pieces that I found, um, only 26 states had a, a list that was useful like for this project and um, the the Crescent Sonata for alto sax appeared 17 times and that was the most popular and um, it, sort of like another reason why this is important is pieces that students will play for these all-state competitions are sort of sort of like standard fare for saxophone repertoire at that level so if you can if you can kind of like play one of these you'll be at the same level of what the other pieces um, uh, sort of like where, um, sort of where every piece is, piece for saxophone you can find is um, Jean Marie Londyke wrote this book called A Comprehensive Guide to the Saxophone Repertoire, 1844 to 2003, which is really great, but it only it only lists that these pieces actually exist. It doesn't actually tell you anything about them, how difficult they are, how long they last, actual instrumentation. So it wasn't really as helpful as I thought. Um, so uh, I, I created like an abbreviated list because I ended up with over like 1,500 pieces for saxophone. So I had to like cut it down somewhere and actually be able to like look at some of these. So um, I abbreviated it down to the top 10% which still includes a, a, a variety of composers, styles, difficulties, all that jazz. Um, I also included one-page summaries of all the pieces that I bought. For a lot of these composers, I had never even heard that they existed before, and obviously I didn't know anything about their music then. So it was, it was more for me and more to pass on to other people to like actually learn a, bit, a little bit about these people, who they were, why they did what they did. Some of it was really cool. So, um, when you actually go to an all-state audition, it's, it's sort of like a job interview, and they sit you down, and they kind of just cut right to the question, why should we hire you for this job? And you have, you have like five minutes to show two or three adjudicators what you're capable, or what, like what you can do on your instrument. So, they're looking for things like, tone quality, mastery of the instrument, um, how you interpret the written music. So what they usually do is they, they give you like a fast section, then a slow section, some sight reading, just just like figure out what, what you want to do. Um, so because the saxophone was invented in 1844, anything musically that happened before that, there was no music written for saxophone. So kind of a way to make up for that is uh, people will transcribe music from other instruments, usually violin or clarinet, because they're sort of similar instruments. But, um, like, past 1844, transcriptions aren't really that popular, because if you have people that write for a saxophone, it doesn't make sense to steal from other music. And, um, because, like, the, these auditions, for, like, the ensemble auditions, you, you audition, for example, on saxophone, and if you score a high enough grade, then they place you into a band of people who also scored high enough and you get to like skip out on school for a couple of days and play some really cool music. But that being said, there's some 
some types of music that they're not really looking for for you to play. Um, most of that is like 20th century music. Um, there, there, there's this one really cool guy, his name is Ryo Noda, he's from Japan. Um, and his, his method of writing was he tried to imitate the style of a traditional Japanese bamboo flute. Um, this flute was used by the Fuke sect of Zen Buddhist monks and as, as a symbol of their separation from the world, they often wore baskets over their heads. So, I mean, if, if you showed up in like one of these auditions with the basket over your head, they'd probably just start laughing and kick you out. Um, it's, yeah, it's not really like what they're looking for. So, um, this, is, this is sort of just like an example um, grading sheet that they'll, that they'll have. I took this from the Massachusetts MMEA website, looking for things like tone, intonation, um, technique through like the entire range of the instrument. Um, <laughs> I, I've done these auditions a couple times and they're, they're really hard. Um, what, I couldn't fit it on the page, but they, they have a section for melodic accuracy, like how how well you can actually play the notes on the page. And like to score 10 in that section, I think at best you can miss like one or two notes. So they, they're really looking for like high quality musicians. Um, so now I'm gonna move on to some music that I actually played and recorded over in Horace Mann on, the, on campus. Um, I picked music from Eugene Bota, and I picked music from him because out of the composers that I found, he was, he was one of the only ones where his music showed up at like different levels of uh, frequency on the all state list. One of the pieces didn't show up at all. One of the pieces showed up four times. So out of, you know, 26, not, not so much. And then one, uh, one that showed up 12 times, one that's like a little bit more popular. Um, this is everything that wrote everything that Eugene Bosa wrote for saxophone. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but the, the four pieces that I highlighted, the, the aria, divertisement, improvisation, caprice, and the minuet, uh, those are the ones that I actually bought. Um, the, by the time I actually got all the music and worked out a date with the accompaniment, I had maybe like two weeks to learn them. So uh, the improvisation caprice turned out to be a little bit too hard for me, but I have musical examples of the other three. So um, we'll start with the minuet. And this one, um, whether or not you can read music, this one is actually pretty easy. Um, I teach saxophone lessons at my high school because I do like a little summer band camp thing. And I actually gave this to two or three students that were entering into seventh grade. So it's, it's a little bit easier than what you would expect the high school to do. Um, the whole purpose of these all-state auditions is to push a high school student to like the the limits of their ability. So I'll see if we can get this to play. Um, yeah, this this all-state thing. Um, I didn't I didn't wasn't really able to get into like why more pieces are um, more popular than others, but it was a really good jumping-off place for for um, like future research projects. <laughs> 